welcome back to winemastery.co.uk. My name is John Lightfoot and this is the absolutely stupendous John Murphy. And we're here to tell you about wine, hopefully help you find the wine, if not the wines, that you will absolutely enjoy or maybe even love. So in this episode, we are tasting, which is unusual for us uh, because they're not sort of a, Omnipotent, is that the right word? I'm not sure, John. Uh, right, I don't know they're you not all over the place in the UK. You can't, it's not easy to walk into a supermarket or uh, even a wine merchants nope. and find a bottle of Greek wine. They, they are far and few uh, between you. It's very difficult to find them. They're not, they're not common at all. Mm -hmm. So what's really exciting is this is one of the few Greek wines uh, that we've managed to get hold of. And it, I'll let you say it because I, I, I like always fall over when I try to say <laughs> well, it. Well, this is called a Mavra Daphne. And I, I you know, many times when doing these videos, I, 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 I will say how excited I am about trying uh, this wine. Um, but I, I, I am genuinely super excited about trying this wine because this wine, the Mavra Daphne Greek wine, I used to sell this wine about 15 to 18 years ago and uh, it was a very popular one for us but unfortunately it just went off the market as you say it's very difficult to go and we went into a supermarket and then it just disappeared from there so this when when i came in this evening and saw this bottle i immediately immediately brought back memories and i thought i remember this wine so i am so looking forward to, to seeing if this is how I remember it. Um, so yeah, there we are, John. Well, that probably says a lot for it because I mean, you know, I, I would suggest that probably all those years ago, you've had lots of wines you no longer sell, yep. and you will not have, re you won't remember them. No, 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 no. So this probably, you know, really sort of has a special place in your heart as well as your taste palette. It really did stand out for us back in the day because this is a very unusual. Um, it's a sweet red wine. Um, and that's of, unusual because you don't yeah. like sweet wines and particularly, do you? Not generally, but I think this is, we've got to think like 15, 18 years ago, this is when my taste buds were still training. When you were three? <laughs> yeah, around about that, uh, This is what my old boss um, would have given me to say, you know, this is how, this, to get your taste buds warmed up or to, to start training them, you start on the sweeter ones. Um, and yeah, I, now I'm not a massive fan of sweet wines, but I'm, I'm still remembering in my head I think what this tastes like, and I'm just so properly excited to have a go of this wine. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm excited because it's a Greek wine. I, 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 when I've been in Greece, I've had some fantastic wines, but never been able to experience them here. So really looking forward to, uh, to, to tasting it. Well, should we have a look at the colour first? Yeah, yeah. I'm even looking at the bottle there. I, I, sorry, I'm distracted. And they, they haven't even changed the label. It's in, I just recognise it. This is, this, this is going to be good. Right, so, well, yeah, sorry, they, probably, they probably have some Yorkshire in them if they've not spent any money on the marketing. <laughs> not in the not the that much time, no. So that's a lot of colour. Would, would I be wrong in describing that as, as tawny? No, I think, yeah, I think you're quite right with that. I'll be honest, I, all those years back, I, I can't really remember what the, what the colour was like, so I don't know, but you, yes, you're right, John, it's definitely, it's definitely tawny. It's, it doesn't have a vibrant red or... Um, no. There's nothing there. Yeah, because the uh, folks... Oh. If they can, uh, whoops, excuse me. Just that, it looks redder mm. in the camera actually, doesn't it? It does, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, take it our word for it. <laughs> it's definitely a tawny colour if, yeah. you, if you manage to get some right. Let's have a look on the old nose there. Oh, that smells to me like port. Hmm. <laughs> it does, oh, it smells wow. like port, and I, I do remember. I'm smelling that, and I'm, I'm also smelling like raisins, which oh, you yeah, get. Oh yeah, that's it. Raisins, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah which you get in that kind which of. Which is like a crossover between, because sometimes you get a sherry that's got that sort of raisiny uh, smell. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and uh, and this just smelling that brings me back to um. Oh yeah. My old raisins. boss. Your boss. Tom, yeah, my old boss, Tom Chervik. If you ever watch any of these videos, Mr. Chervik, I uh, even Janet Chervik. Um, is Janet his wife? Janet's his wife. Yeah. Uh, he always used to describe this as. A poor man's port. Now, whether that's fair or not, but you, we're just saying that. I mean, what was this six twenty-five? Yeah, six. Let me just uh, double. Yeah, six twenty-five. Yeah, six twenty-five. But I remember when we were selling it all those years ago. It was four ninety-nine. So it was a fact. So it's not really gone up that much in in fifteen years, has it? Like, no. which again is brilliant. So, so yeah, we've got that. It's, it smells like I remember. <laughs> so, John, I'm just gonna have to oh, taste this because okay. the excitement is. Let's, to, let's do it. 
Mmm. Oh, that's delicious. Oh, that's, that's nectar. That's, oh, wow. That's nectar, you're right. That is, that is absolute, a big smile on my face because that's brought back so many memories as a, a young cheesemonger. Tasting wines. Ah, oh, John, well done for getting that. Whoa. Absolutely well done. You've made, you've, you've absolutely made my evening with that. It mm. does, it it's so port-esque. It is. I wonder actually whether you're doing a disservice by calling it, or Tom was doing a disservice by calling it poor man's port because, you know, poor man's port suggests that if you can't afford port, buy this, which I agree, at 625 you, you would be, you know, more than welcome to. But it's not something that I would say, okay, I can afford, I can afford port, therefore I'm not going to buy this. Actually, I would still buy this. I think it stands up on its own. I see what you mean, John, and, I, and I'm, I, I'm drinking this and from the knowledge I have of port, like you're saying, sometimes I would lean towards that. So perhaps it isn't an injustice calling it a poor man's port as such. Um, but I can understand where he's coming from when he, when he was saying it at £6.25. Yeah. Oof. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. That is a, so the, the, the flavours, it has that, there's that nice um, intensity there and that raisiny kind of flavour comes through there. This is quite an experience. This is quite an experience. Yeah. Because when you when you talk about sweet wines, I'm sure you know when someone says to me sweet wine, I immediately mean, get sort of cloy, sweetie. I'm, mm. I'm not going to like that. Um, but if someone said to me, you know, if they describe it as a sweet red wine, I go, oh, I don't think I'm going to like that. But if they describe it as a rather light port, I go, oh yeah, I'll give that a go. Yeah, and uh, it is absolutely delicious. That there's a little bit of tannin just on the edge there. Only slight. So only slight, mm. very very slight. The sweetness is there, but it's not sickly in any way not at all. At all. The length there as well. As you're it talking is. there, I'm just thinking, you know, for a six pound twenty five bottle of wine. Yeah. That yeah. is for me head and shoulders above a lot. And I don't. <laughs> you know, Greek wines have been. You know, I know back in the day, they were tarred with a brush of you know not being very nice. Or is it uh, Rets, Retsna, uh, Retsina, 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 Yeah, they, yeah. I think everyone drinks that. I think Ooh, it was horrible. But well, yeah, but. I mean, you know, it is one of the oldest wine producing countries in the world. Mm. Um, along here with Georgia and all of those. So it's, it's actually, you know, it has got, I mean, I tasted some, I went to a wine exhibition once and tasted some of the wines there and they were absolutely delicious. As I say, but they're not, they don't proliferate around the, the UK no, anyway. Really, no, no, no. The Greek, they, they kind of f fell out of um, favour or fashion. Uh, you know, I, I, I personally, I don't sell any Greek wines. Perhaps you should up my game after, in fact, John, after tasting that, I'm going to have, I'm going to look into more Greek wines because that, my opinion is, Properly outstanding. It is. It is really, really, really nice. I, you know, I, in fact, I'm gobsmacked. I, I'm, I'm already thinking to myself, whoa, I don't know why I'm going to score this because I'm so excited about mm -hmm. it. I, I'm getting a little bit detached from reality. I, I'm probably going to be a bit silly. But anyway, uh, perhaps before that, we should touch base and just go into pairing. Okay, well, like you are just saying there, John, I'm, my head's all, uh, oh, what can I, what can I score this? Can I have to, because he, it deserves a good score. Anyway, as you said, before that, we'll look at pairing. Pairing this has to go with a blue cheese, but this has to go with um, um, what, something... That, uh, right, I'm going to go for something like... And I'm thinking this now, and I think I recommended this not so long ago, uh, the Cashel Blue, because cheeses fluctuate when, when the good, the bad, you know, which, um, when they're showing well. And I know for a fact the Cashel Blue is showing very, very well at the moment. It's an Irish Blue. It's, it's not usually like this, but it's really almost spongy, soft texture and the flavour, really rich, nice salty bit that just sits at the back of your tongue there. And I reckon that with a bit of the Cashel Blue, you would be unstoppable. So I'm just going to ask for a second one. And I'm saying that because uh, the viewer may well be viewing this in, you know, October mm. 2025. So, so something's going to be a little bit more consistent and ah, this is going to blow your mind. Rock 4. Hey, I'm amazed, you <laughs> <play. laughs> Rock 4, one of the strongest blue cheeses I've got in my fridge. But again, that saltiness, the intense saltiness is there. But also, it's, it, 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 Rock 4 is made with the used milk. So if you can get past that initial kind of salty edge, you've got the sweetness of the used milk comes in then. And again, bah, yeah, yeah, that'd be a good night. I tell you, if you were to, if you were to have yourself a dinner party and you've been drinking you know, that some ordinary wines all, all night and, and, and eating the food that was going to match them. And then you brought out a cheese board, which had rock four on, and you brought that wine out. 
That'd be the stuff of legends, I would say. Well, you know, if you said that in Newcastle, use, you know, it means yours in Newcastle. What, use? Use. Does yeah. it? Yeah, so, you know, if you don't, don't say that in Newcastle. So, um... <laughs> use. Use. Um, so I'm struggling with what to eat, and what, I, what I'm actually, I'm going to have a little bit of a cop out here, because what I would say is in terms of a meal, what I would say to you is if you've had your main course and you're on to dessert, and you're not really into a dessert, you don't really want a dessert, it's a little bit too filling, you're reasonably full, I'd say have a glass of this. Mm -hmm. Have this to replace the dessert course. Mm -hmm. and, and I, I can't think, I mean, you know, the, I can't think of a, a main course that this would, would pair with, no. particularly. No, this, this would have to be, as you say, either as your dessert or with a cheese ball. Yeah. That, that's, and, albeit it's not gonna fit into to many kind of, like I say, many meals or what you pair it with, but what it does on, on its own, it does very well, very, yeah. very well, which then comes down to the score, John, and this is the bit we've been waiting for. Yeah, it is the bit I'm waiting for. And I'm just thinking that we, you know, this is, we're, we're filming this um, in late June uh, 2022. Uh, it's reasonably hot evening. And I'm just thinking how much this would appeal on a very cold December, January evening with a log fire in front of you and this. So, you know, I, I, I think this does brilliantly to, you know, build up so much enthusiasm for us in this, on this warm evening. Goodness knows what it would be like on a, on a sort of chilly, cold, oh. where warm, warm your heart. So, mm. I t I'm ready with my score. I'm ready with my score. Okay. Do you want me to go first? Go for it. 92. <gasps> 93. Oh really? Uh, and, and that's a big score. That is John. a big, that is a big score, score. For you. I and think uh, that might be your highest ever. It it might be. It might be. But I could not do it. I was I was teeter on the ninety two because I'm thinking just how far away it is from a hundred because a hundred has got to be yeah smashing. But this this is not far from this. It's six pound twenty five. Yeah, it's delicious. It's fifteen percent. You know, I can't think of a time a point where if someone had said, "Do you want a glass of Mavrodafne?" I can't think of one time. Say, "Nah, I'm all right." Every, every time anybody off the bat, I'd go for it. It's unique, it stands on its own. For me, it's got everything there. So I think, I, I know 93 is very high and perhaps generous, but this wine deserves it. Mm. 92 is massive. Yeah, 92, absolutely. I think you're absolutely right now. I, I, I don't begrudge it that extra point at all. And the other thing it's done for me is, I'd really like to investigate more Greek wines. Yes. Yes, well, I'm saying I'm, I'm definitely going to have to look, look for, for the shop, definitely. Yeah, I mean, it really does, you know, in general, yeah, I really want to get into some more Greek wines. Mm, sounds like a good excuse to go to Greece, doesn't it? <laughs> I'll come with you, John. <laughs> Why master you on tour? Why master you on tour? Well, you know, this is a, obviously for us guys a definite buy, buy, buy. It's mm -hmm. really good. Um, you know, look it up. I'm sure there's a, a, a you know somewhere local. As John said, they've gone to supermarkets now, yep. so uh, you should be able to get it. I'm sure it's available around the world. Certainly, if it's available in the UK, I'm sure it'll be available elsewhere around the world. Fantastic mm. wine. Well, that I think's one of the top wines we've tasted so far, and I'm very pleased with that. And so am I. Oh, what a great what a great place to end the evening. Mm, Fantastic. Indeed. Yeah. yeah. Okay, guys. Until the next time, when hopefully we can find another winner like this. We'll see you there. Chin chin. Chin chin.